How can a single driver reproduce multiple frequencies? This is one of the great mysteries of the universe. And it comes from us, uh, to us from Andrew in Toledo, Ohio. How does a single speaker driver play multiple frequencies at the same time? I don't understand how music can come out of one driver that plays different frequencies at the same time. Sound is just an oscillating pressure wave of air, so the cone itself cannot move to different speeds and reproduce two different frequencies at the same time, and that's where I get confused. It must be true, because we get multiple frequencies at the same time out of a single cone, yet it makes no sense. Aliens. It's all aliens. All right. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. That, you know, that's one of the things I love about this whole series is the great, great questions that we get. I just thank you. I could, I mean, I do a video every frickin' day, right? So, and I love doing them, but I would easily run out of questions. And you guys just, I've got 158 pages, over 1,500 questions, so... That's probably more days than I have left in me, so I, I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, but I, I do pick out the juiciest ones that we haven't talked about before. Okay, here's, here's a, a woofer. Isn't this a beaut? Woo! This is a uh, sample, a model, or actually a model, it's an actual, the woofer, uh, the new 12-inch woofer that we're going to be using in PS Audio's upcoming speakers. And this thing's a brute. Inch and a half voice coil, giant magnet, cast frame, Nice aluminum. I mean, this thing has an X max. X max is how far it can move up and down from the from its zero point. And oh, it's I'm excited to get this sucker hooked up. So I'm going to use this to kind of demonstrate because the quick answer is that it, yeah, it can. It can move in in multiple uh, frequencies at the same time. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you something. All right, here's something that a lot of people don't know, because we think about a speaker like this having to have a big amp, right? Big speaker, big amp. We need hundreds of watts, thousands of watts, you know. But that's only sort of true. Here's a 9-volt battery. Nothing up my sleeve. Uh, so I got my 9-volt battery here, and it's just hooked up to the woofer, and watch. Can you see that? Ooh, there's little things bouncing on that. So every time I hook the, see it holds up? Let's go. And if I, th this clip lead's a real bear. So if I were to reverse the battery, I can't pull that clip lead off very well. Well, here, let's try it. Damn, should have got it easier to manipulate clip lead. Christ, ah, now watch. See it goes down? Okay, so imagine, and, and <laughs> a sine wave is a lot smoother than Paul going boom, bump, boom, bump, boom, bump, but you can see it move, right? Now imagine that I actually have a smooth thing and it's going wow, wow. If I, if I had a stupid audio generator, I, you know, one of the things that's interesting about progress over time is there is no good technician bench. In, in back in my day that wouldn't have a standard sine wave generator handy and but this is this is all you know very expensive computer operated things called audio precisions and they I mean it still makes sine waves but you got to fire the computer up it used to be really simple I could just hook it up and woo 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 what I could show you on here but anyway um, so imagine a very low frequency sine wave two hertz and it's going to go Womp, 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 right? And it's moving. Well, as it's moving, if we like, and so you can see, uh, in between there, if I were to add some higher frequencies, then it's going to go like this. Okay? It's going to move up and down for the slow frequency, real nice and smooth, or ragged like Paul's doing like this. And then if I add a higher frequency, if it, if it didn't have the low frequency, you just see, you would hardly be able to see it. It would be, it'd be moving real fast, thousand times a second, can't see it. 
we can only see, what, 10, 12 times, 20 times a second? Maybe not even that. Maybe 15 times a second we can see. Otherwise, it, it would just kind of look like a blur. But if I have, let's say, a thousand cycle tone going through here where I can't really see it, but I hear it. And then, as it's playing, if I want to go, that happens, and the cone moves up and down, up and down, just as slow as you please, but at the same time, it's wiggling back and forth. And then you can add more frequencies, and then it's wiggling, and then And if you look at a sine wave, is there, of course I didn't come prepared with my little battery. I was so proud of myself, I prepared my little battery. Got everything going for you. Um, what I'm looking for is a stupid pencil. Well, sorry about that. I don't know where there is a pencil. See, everybody tries to be so neat. Back in, back in my day, it was a trash heap. It was a mess. Uh, I'll try and draw, uh, I'll air draw, kind of like air guitar, right? So if you look at music, it, it looks kind of like, ever seen it? It's kind of like jagged. Um, you know, the, the, there's ups and downs. It's not just a sign. We don't listen to sine waves. Music is, is this exaggerated, it's just a, you know, a jagged peak. Well, those jaggy things are what's moving this up and down at, at slow and low frequencies at the same time. So if you look, so let's say the jaggies are following this low frequency thing. If we were listening to two instruments at the same time, that's what's happening. So yes, this does move in and out fast and slow at the same time. And that's just a little demonstration of what's happening. So that's how it works. Now, briefly, as you know, this is a woofer. And, and yes, it, if I put a thousand cycles in this, it'll, it'll reproduce it. It doesn't do a great job because we'd rather have a tweeter, which is a smaller version of this exact same thing. So most systems, two-way, three-way, have dividers so that we can have a small driver that's running the, the high frequencies. But even there, let's say it's, it's a thousand cycles to 20,000 cycles, same thing applies. As that tweeter is moving at, uh, at a thousand cycles, it's also moving at 20,000 cycles and 10,000 and 11,000 and whatever it needs to make that thing happen at the same time. And the last thing I will tell you is you might wonder then, well, if all of that's true and these high frequencies are, are happening at the same time the low frequencies are happening, doesn't the driver produce a type of distortion because those high frequencies are coming closer and farther away from me at low frequencies, right? It's moving slowly. And when that happens, now that high frequency driver is closer and farther away. And that's one of the problems with all range drivers. When you see a single driver that's trying to do all frequencies, and that's called Doppler distortion. Doppler distortion is, is classically, you know, the train whistle that it gets a lower frequency as it gets farther away and a higher frequency as it gets closer. Even though if you're on the train uh, in that classic example, the, the, the whistle is always the same frequency, right? But standing away from it, as that whistle goes and you hear it, it, it lowers in frequency as it gets farther away. And that's because of this effect of, of moving uh, relatively slowly and stretching out the waves and, and compressing them uh, in, in, in time. So that is a problem and one of the reasons why we separate frequencies into woofers mid-ranges and tweeters to reduce that Doppler distortion. But it's always there to some degree in every single driver because it's moving at multiple frequencies at the same time. Okay, hope that helped. Great question. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.